Cranberries, cranberries. Crimson cranberries. Juicy. Cranberries, cranberries. Let me introduce you. Eat them fresh or eat them dry or put them in a apple pie. Hello, everybody. Hello, children. Welcome to this online field trip. I'm Sam and today we're in Kent, which is in the southeast of England. We're here to learn all about a wintry food. Now, the food we're going to learn about today is only available fresh this time of year and is often a big part of what we eat around Christmas time. Of course, I'm talking about cranberries. Now, the reason why we're here in Kent is this is where the pack house is. This is where the cranberries are put into punnets, ready to go to your local store. And as you can see behind us, this is what's happening now. They're sorting through the cranberries, making sure that they're nice, fresh, juicy ones, none are damaged before they're put into punnets. All the cranberries you see here in the pack house aren't grown here in Kent. They're in fact grown all the way over in the United States of America in Cape Cod, which is where our guide for today comes from. This is Patrick. Patrick, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, it's great to be here. I'm excited. <laughs> I think the children are probably thinking, oh, there's a bit of a strange accent there. You've got the American accent. So where is Cape Cod in America? So Cape Cod is in Massachusetts, actually just about an hour south of Boston and just about 15 minutes away from Plymouth, which is where the pilgrims originally landed in America. Fantastic. So how long would it have taken you to get here? It took me about six hours on the plane and then another hour or two on trains to get down here to Kent. Fantastic. Well, I hope you're going to enjoy yourself while you're here in England. Yeah, I, I hope so too. <laughs> Great. We also have another expert guide with us today. We have James, who's a chef. What are you going to be doing for us today, James? Hi, I'm going to be making today some homemade cranberry juice. We are also going to make some homemade cranberry sauce. And I'm also going to show you a little trick which you can use to make some muffins as well. Can't wait. Thank you so much, James. So we'll be checking in with James throughout the course of this online field trip. Um, and what are we going to find out today from you? So today, yeah, we're going to learn a little bit about how we actually grow cranberries back in Cape Cod. We're going to learn a little bit about how they come from Cape Cod all the way over here and, you know, also what you can do with them. Fantastic. So we're going to see the whole process. It's really exciting, this one. Let's find out who we have joining us today then. So let's go over to our first school, go over to John Henry Newman Academy, where Miss Welton's class is taking part in Oxford. Hello, children. Hello. 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 Let's go over to All Saints School now, where Mrs. Webb's class is taking part in Barry. Let's go over to Cornish Park now, where Miss O'Neill's class is taking part in Flint. And finally, let's go to Charlton Manor Primary School, where Miss Pease's class is taking part in London. Hey, children. Hello. Hello, everybody. Well, it's really great to have you all watching and learning with us today. It really is going to be an exciting field trip. I think, first of all, we should find out from Patrick a bit more about himself and the cranberries as well. So, Patrick, how long have you been growing cranberries for? I've actually been growing cranberries my whole life. I was born into it. Um, my father did it, and it's been in my family for a long time. I'm actually the fourth generation, so it's been passed down from generation to generation. Wow, and so how many cranberries would you grow each year, say? A lot, almost two million kilos. Wow, that's a lot of cranberries. Yeah, it is a lot of cranberries. <laughs> so how do cranberries grow? So cranberries are gonna grow in a sandy bog. They grow on a low, low laying vine. It's not actually a bush or a tree or anything like that. It's just a small vine that grows on that bog. Wow, it's amazing. So what kind of climate would they need to, to flourish? Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be a little bit cold in the spring and then it's gonna warm up in the summer and it's gonna be a nice warm summer and then again in the fall, it's gonna be cold again. Great, okay. And um, as we have already said, all the cranberries here in the pack house have come from your farm in Cape Cod, but where else do cranberries grow? Cranberries grow in a few different countries. About 97% of the cranberries are actually grown in North America, so that would be the United States and Canada, 
Um, cranberries do also grow in countries like Chile, and you can even find them wild here in England as well. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I literally learned a, an amazing fact uh, this week, and that was the fact that, that cranberries used to be a wild berry, a wild fruit that used to be grown across England and Wales. So, and I guess now if we're kind of walking out with, uh, with our parents, taking a little look around, we could maybe find some cranberries. Yes, absolutely. You could probably find some cranberries, uh, you know, if you look hard enough. Oh, that's great. It's really fascinating. So I'm not the only one that's been learning about cranberries this week, though. Um, I know our schools have already learned a lot, so let's put our schools to the test. Let's head over to a John Henry Newman Academy um, to see if anybody has any facts over there. Hi, my name's Eamon. <laughs> my fact is in the wild, cranberries grow in bogs. So cranberries grow in bogs. That's a, a great fact. That is true, yes. Many That's people don't know that, actually. Yeah, I didn't know that. I've just learnt that. Uh, what a great fact. And thank you for teaching me something, children. And do we have another fact from John Henry Newman Academy? Hi, my name's Damien. My fact is cranberries can float. That's a really great fact. So cranberries can float. Yes, actually, they do float. That's one of the two ways that we actually harvest them. Oh, so you put water, is it flooded, the, wa the yes, water? Yes, it's then? very interesting because they grow dry all year long. Some people think that they're underwater, but we do actually, one of the two ways to harvest them is to flood up the bog and then release them from the vine and they'll all float to the top. Oh, wow. And, we can, uh, and what do you do? Do you get a, a big net to scoop them Yes, we use a big rack um, and we use that to just collect the cranberries and then we pump them into a truck. They go onto a truck into our pack house and then across the ocean there and then they end up here. That's, That's amazing. Crazy. Such fun. What a fun way of picking something. That's really good. Um, great facts. Let's get another one from John Henry Newman. My name's Rosie and my fact is that cranberries grow in wet places like Oxford, England. That's fantastic. So cranberries grow in wet places like England. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, actually, yes, they do. Yeah. That's great. Are you impressed with what our class have learned I, so far? I'm very impressed, actually. <laughs> they know more than most people. <laughs> it's time to learn more about cranberries now. This is our first video all about how cranberries grow. How do cranberries grow? Cranberries are a fruit that grows on vines on boggy marshes. They are harvested from September to November. In this country, we often eat them during winter celebrations, such as Christmas. They're also an important fruit for celebrating a festival called Thanksgiving in Canada and the United States of America, where they grow 97% of the world's crop of cranberries. Cranberries don't grow from seeds. Instead, new plants are grown from cutting a piece of stem and leaf from an older plant. This is called propagation. The cuttings are put into the soil and soon they grow roots of their own and become baby cranberry plants. Cranberry plants can grow and bear fruit for many years. There are some cranberry plants in Wisconsin in the US that are 70 years old. Another place known for growing cranberries is Cape Cod in Massachusetts. Here, they plant new baby plants out in the fields each April. The plants like the ground to be really wet, acidic and sandy. They don't need lots of nutrients or fertiliser like some crops. The small pink flowers that form on the plants in June are where cranberries get their name from. Early European settlers in North America thought that the flowers looked like a crane's bill, so they called them craneberries. Once the bees have pollinated the flowers, the berries begin to form. They are white to start with, but slowly change to be bright crimson red. In September, it's time to start the harvest. In this field alone, there are more than 20 million berries ready to be picked and packed. There are two ways to harvest cranberries, dry harvesting and wet harvesting. These machines are dry harvesting the cranberries very carefully so they don't get damaged. When these crates are full, they weigh 400 kilograms each. 
That's the same weight as an adult female brown bear. They are lifted onto the back of a lorry by helicopter, because a tractor driving through the field would crush the plants. Next, they are taken to the pack house for processing. For the wet harvest, this field has been flooded full of water. Then this machine loosens the berries so that they float to the top. The floating berries are gathered at the edge of the flooded field. Now the berries are being sucked up using these underwater pipes. The workers use the rakes to gently push the berries towards the pipe. Finally, they are washed before a conveyor belt transports them into a waiting lorry. These cranberries will be used to make juice and dried cranberries. Meanwhile, the dry harvested cranberries are washed and packed into these large crates, ready for the next stage of their journey to your Christmas dinner plate. So now we know how the cranberries get from Patrick's farm in Cape Cod all the way over here to Kent. It's pretty good, isn't it? Um, now we've moved over to James to find out he's get, how he's getting on. And James is going to make us a cranberry, cranberry juice, aren't juice. you? Yeah, now you can buy cranberry juice in a carton at the supermarket, but you might have wondered how does it turn from one of those into a glass like that? So we thought we'd give you a little sneak peek. Great. So, you need three ingredients. Two I've got in this pan. The first ingredient is 600 grams of cranberries. And the other ingredient is plain old water. And these have been boiling away until they burst. So they're going to look a little bit paler. Wow. So all that is is boiled cranberries at that the moment. boiled cranberries and water. Great. Okay. Now, it's quite important before you blend your mixture, that you let it go really, really cold. Because if you blend it when it's hot, mm -hmm. it's really dangerous. And if you're going to use a blender like this, make sure you put the lid on. Because <laughs> you will not be popular at home if you turn your mother's ceiling cranberry coloured. <laughs> so, what I would have done, I've put some cranberries in here, but I've already blended them here. Now, this is just a colander or a sieve, and I've lined it with muslin, which is a type of cloth, and that's going to stop all the bits going through to our juice. Okay, so under here in my bowl is wow. the juice that we've created from boiling up and okay. blending those cranberries. So you, so you blend that for a few seconds and then you tip it through. Exactly. All of the bits that you don't want is there. So that's all there and I'm going to show you a little Great. sneaky trick with that later on. Okay. Okay, now we could <laughs> drink that but it's very, very bitter. Cranberries right. are quite sharp and quite bitter, okay. and you want to add some sweetener. Now, if you buy it in the shop, quite often, it's got quite a lot of sugar in. Mm -hmm. And so for this amount of juice, you'd need that much sugar. Wow, okay. Okay, so it's quite, quite a lot, and we know we don't want to eat too much mm -hmm. sugar, because it's not good for our teeth and it's not good for our health. Okay, so instead, what we're gonna use is just plain old apple juice. Okay, great. Okay. That's a great way of sweetness. So that's got it? a natural sweetness in it, and we're going to use that instead. So I'm going to use half apple juice, and there's some cranberry juice that I've made Ooh, before. Oh, lovely. Okay, so I'm going to put half apple juice, half cranberry juice. You can make it slightly different. If you like it a little bit sweeter, you might want to put a little bit more apple juice. Okay. If you like it a little bit more sharp, you might want to add a little bit more cranberry. Great, you can play okay. around with it. Great, I've and got some to try. There we go, chaps. Lovely. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers, Patrick. Great to have you all the way from Cape, uh, Cape Cod. That's great. Good. That is amazing. That's really authentic. Good. Yeah. I've got the, got the grower. Yeah. 
It <laughs> tastes. It just tastes very fresh and yeah, really good for you does. as yeah, well. Oh, that's so good, children. Very, very nice indeed. You might want to try that with the punnets of uh, cranberries that you have in your classroom. Um, I think we're learning so much. I think we should get some questions now, see if uh, any of our schools have questions. So first of all, let's go over to All Saints School um, and see if Mrs Webb's class have any questions. How long do cranberries have to stay on their stalk? Well, a really good question. So, Patrick, how long do cranberries have to stay on their stalk? So, yeah, cranberries are going to stay on their stalk from about June until they're harvested. They can be harvested any time from September almost into November, actually, as well. So all the way through October. OK, great. That's a really good question. Let's get another one from All Saints School. How big do cranberries grow? Oh, how big do cranberries grow, Patrick? So, cranberries come in essentially two different sizes mm -hmm. because there's different varieties of cranberries. Um, some are a little bit larger than others, but the size difference isn't too much. Um, in general, a cranberry is not going to be any bigger than, say, a grape, but a little bit bigger than a blueberry. So okay. it's about, about that big. Okay. Yeah. So you can't just leave it on the stalk and it would grow and grow and grow. It would just, no, I guess, no, die no. if you didn't it pick it. It would stop growing, yeah. Okay, that's a really good question. Let's get another one from All Saints School. Is the name cranberry named after the bird or the flower? So, Patrick, do you know this one? Was the name cranberry named after a bird or a flower? Um, actually, I've heard a couple different variations, but I have heard that it's named after the crane, which is a bird that's native to... Um, North America and years and years and years ago it was associated with the cranberry. Wow what a fascinating fact that's so good. Let's get one last uh, question from uh, All Saints School. What months do cranberries grow and when do they stop growing? Great question. So what months do cranberries start growing and when do they stop growing? Yep so they're gonna start as early as April actually. Um, and then in June they'll flower and then they'll continue to grow as a small berry and they'll start out a bit green or white and slowly turn red and then in September and October and just a little bit of November they'll be ready to harvest. Fantastic. Great questions, All Saints School. Um, Cornish Park and Charlton Manor Primary will have an opportunity for you to ask Patrick some questions later on. Uh, it's time for another video now, and this is all about what happens to the cranberries when they arrive in the UK. Cranberries, from processing to packaging. The cranberries that have been freshly picked at Edgewood Boggs Farm in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, make their way across the Atlantic Ocean from the United States of America to the UK. It takes between seven and ten days for the ships to travel all the way across the ocean to their destination at Liverpool docks. Once they arrive, the cranberries are delivered by road to the pack house in Kent. When the berries arrive at the pack house, they are checked for quality before being put into a cold store. Once in the cold store, the berries can be kept there for up to 10 weeks. They are kept at 3.4 degrees Celsius to keep them fresh. Then, the cranberries are placed onto this conveyor belt, where they are sorted by hand to check for berries that might be damaged and not good for eating. They are then packed into punnets by hand and weighed to make sure the right amount of cranberries is inside each one. Next, the punnets travel onto this area where they are packed together into batches. They are wrapped in film and heat sealed by this machine to make sure the fruit stays nice and fresh. It can seal up to 60 punnets every minute, which is one every second. Once they're sealed, each punnet is given a sticker. This sticker tells us the weight, the variety and where the berries were grown. The punnets of cranberries are then placed onto packing crates. These crates are then stacked onto pallets and wrapped to protect them. 
finally, the cranberries are loaded onto the delivery lorries and then taken to stores across the country for you to buy and eat with your Christmas dinner. Isn't it incredible that the cranberries travel all the way across the sea and still look so fresh like they were picked yesterday? We have some of those fresh cranberries in front of us now. But Patrick, we have some other types of food that cranberries made from as well, don't we, over here? Yes, so over here we have a cranberry sauce. And then this here is just another type of cranberry sauce. You'll find different varieties. And we also have some cranberry juice here and some dried cranberries as well. So how do you make dried cranberries? How, how do they turn into? So dried cranberries, there's two different types. There's the sweetened type and there's also the unsweetened type. Now, dried cranberries are made with a big machine that's gonna take all of the water right out of the cranberries and that actually causes them to shrivel up just like this and they'll last a little bit longer that way. Fantastic, yeah, you can often, they're good for snacking, aren't they? You have them in a packet and keep them with you in your bag. Now, we all know that uh, cranberries taste good, but they are good for you too as well. They're a source of vitamin C, which is good for a healthy immune system, strong bones, healthy teeth and skin as well. And around this much, so about as much as you can fit in the palm of your hands, will act as one of your five fruit and vegetables a day. There we go. So we are learning so much about cranberries. I think it's time to give the other schools an opportunity to ask you some questions now, Patrick. I love that. Um, so we seem to have lost Cornish Park, um, but I do have your questions here, children, and I know that you are watching us. We just can't communicate with you. So I'm going to ask um, Patrick your questions for you so you don't miss out. So Patrick, why are cranberries good for you? Cranberries are good for you, just like you said. They're great for, you know, things like the immune system. Fantastic. Um, and the other question from Cornish Park is, um, what is a, why is a dried cranberry, why does it taste so good? What's added to it? Well, as I mentioned before, some are sweetened, others are not. The sweetened ones have a, kind of a lot of sugar in them, uh, which is going to make them taste a little bit better because normally they're a little bit better. Okay. But the other cranberries that are not, that do not have sugar added are, you know, taste about the same as a regular cranberry. Okay, fantastic. Great questions, Cornish Park. Let's go over to Charlton Manor now, see if you have any questions for Patrick. Okay, we, we, we didn't hear the sound there, but I have a feeling it was, how does the air get inside cranberries, Patrick? Oh, okay. So there's nothing special that's done to the cranberries, but the air is, the reason why, like we talked about earlier, cranberries will float. So when cranberries grow, there's actually four chambers of open space inside of them, and that allows air to be in there, which makes them float. Fantastic, lovely. Uh, do we have another question from Charlton Manor? Great, fantastic. So how long does it take for cranberries to grow, Patrick? Um, it's gonna take a few months. Like I mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, it starts in April, and there's different processes that it's gonna go through. And each month it's doing kind of a different thing from April all the way through September and October. Fantastic, great questions, children. Um, now, when I think of cranberries, Patrick, I think of at Christmas time, I think of having a nice big portion of turkey with a big dollop of cranberry sauce on the side. But we haven't been doing it that long in the UK, eating turkey and cranberry, probably for about 50 years. And it's in fact a tradition that We've kind, of, we've kind of stolen from North America, haven't yeah. we? It's a big celebration dinner called Thanksgiving, isn't it? Yes, so Thanksgiving has been around in the United States for hundreds of years, actually. It started, like we said earlier, when the pilgrims came over, and many fruits, like cranberries and also some vegetables and things like that, are harvested that time of year in the fall. So the pilgrims and early settlers wanted to be able to celebrate their harvest and that's why they came up with Thanksgiving where they have a big feast on everything that they've harvested that year and it also includes things like cranberries are always going to be there and turkey is always going to be there. That's fascinating. Well I, I don't know about you children, but I'm very grateful that we have managed to borrow uh, their tradition and we now have lovely delicious turkey and cranberry sauce um, on Christmas Day. Um, talking of cranberry sauce, I think it's about time we, uh, we checked in with our expert chef James because he is going to actually make some cranberry sauce for us now. So let's find out how he does that. 
Hi guys. Hello, how are we getting on James? We're doing all right. I'm just finishing off my orange juice, mm -hmm. which we're going to put in in a moment. So, cranberry sauce. Now, everybody's got a punnet of cranberries. Yes. Now, conveniently, this is the exact amount of cranberries you need to make this recipe. No so need to weigh, 300, I love that. <laughs> 300 grams, which I've already put into my bowl here. Okay. So I'm going to put those into my empty, clean saucepan. Okay, now we need a few more ingredients for this. Yeah. We need some brown sugar. This is going to give it a nice, slightly treacly, caramelly flavour. Yeah. Okay, now it's okay because we're not going to have this every day. Okay, okay. you only have a little bit on the side. A little bit on the you? side, yeah. and we're not going to have it every day. So we put our brown sugar in. Okay. okay. So that's gone into our pan. Okay, we need some spices. So oh. we're going to use cinnamon sticks. Okay, now cinnamon sticks are from a bark of a tree, believe it or not, yeah. and they're a very Christmassy flavour. Okay, if you think of anything Christmassy, it's probably got some cinnamon in it. Yes. Okay, now to release that flavour, what you need to do is you need to break your stick in half. Okay, and that will get all of that lovely Christmassy cinnamon flavour into your cranberry sauce. So that's lovely. gone in with everything else. Okay, two more ingredients and they come from the same thing. So we've got a little bit of orange peel, okay? So that's going in. I'm going to show you how to do that. You just take your orange, and you take a peeler, and you're always making sure you peel away from you. Just scrape off some of that skin, okay? And you want to leave the white pith, which is just under the skin, on the orange, because that's going to make it taste a bit bitter. Okay. okay? And the last ingredient, is the juice of two oranges. So I've got some there that I've already done. And I've got some here that I've just juiced. Okay. Lovely. And lots of nice fruit. Oof. All we're going to do is we're going to turn on our hob and we're going to cook that on a medium heat. So not too low, not too high, for about, I would say, 15, 20 minutes. Now, unfortunately, we haven't got 15 or 20 minutes. So, oh, in this so pan good. here, I've got some that I've already made. Wow. And as you can see, the berries have all kind of burst and it's gone a bit thick. Now, there's a reason why it's gone a bit thick and that's because the cranberries are very high in something called pectin. Now, pectin is a natural chemical that's in the fruit and that is what sets jellies, jams, okay. and in this case, cranberry sauce. So it won't be too thick now, but once that's cooled down, oh, lovely. which is what we've got here, this is our cranberry sauce. Wow, so I always wondered why it kind of was jellyfied. Yeah. So it's actually something naturally in the cranberry. Naturally, it's going to make it go all set. Wow. Can now, we try some, please, you James? can, <laughs> if I can find where I've put my teaspoons. Here we go, so, I've got some teaspoons. Excellent. There we go, I was well hiding done. them. There Excellent. we go. Oh, this looks good. I'm sure Patrick's dying to try some. It sure smells good. I'm sure you've had more than enough cranberry oh. sauce in your time. I have, but that is good. Wow, I've got a big bit there. Have it. Mmm, that is so good. Thank you. And I'm guessing if you are a good cook or you like cooking, you can make these as presents. Yeah, I mean, basically, if you put it in whilst it's still warm, into yeah. a warm jar, so maybe just out of the dishwasher or just out of the oven slightly, get an yeah. adult to help you, put it in warm, put the lid on, and that will be a great present if you keep it in the fridge and give it to somebody wow. at Christmas. That's I awesome. know, I would be very happy if I got a... Uh, it's just that personal touch, isn't yeah. it, that someone spent yeah. time to do. Yeah. Now, children, you have um, punnets of cranberries in your classroom, so you can choose what you want to do with it. I mean, you might want to try the juice, um, or you may want to try the cranberry. I guess the cranberry just takes a bit more time, but I think it's well yeah. worth it. Do you have any tips, James, if uh, the children are going to use their... I would say go easy on the sugar yeah. because cranberries vary. Sometimes they're a bit sweet, sometimes they're not so sweet, and you can always add a bit more, but you can't take it away. Yes, yeah. So don't put too much sugar in at the start. Yeah. And the other thing I would say is if you remember when we made our juice, we had all of this pulp left over. Yeah. We don't want to go to waste with that. So what I've made is I've made some cranberry muffins <gasps> and I've used some of the dried cranberries and I've put the pulp into my muffin mix. That's amazing. And it helps keep them nice and moist and gives them a nice cranberry flavour. That so is. So don't throw anything away. 
Wow, so there's so many things that you can make with cranberries. I never knew. I never knew. Thank you so much, James. So, children, we've almost come to the end of this online field trip. I think it's just enough time. Firstly, to find out, one last question for both of you. Patrick, what's the best thing about um, being a cranberry farmer? Best thing about being a cranberry farmer? Probably the fact that I get to come over here and share it with you guys. <laughs> and, and tuck into all this. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I love it. And James, the best thing about cooking with cranberries? Well, cooking with cranberries, I think the moment you start cooking, you realise that Christmas is not that far away. Oh, yeah. It just smells so Christmassy here at the moment, children. It really does. I feel yeah. like I should have some tinsel wrapped around me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to our schools. Let's find out what you have learned today on this online field trip. First of all, John Henry Newman Academy. What have you learned? Learn today. Hi, my name is Beth. I <coughs> learned <coughs> that at when the crumbles are are collected, a helicopter flaps comes to get get them, so they are. Not squashed. Wow, that's really great fat, Beth. Those, so the helicopter comes to collect them so they don't get squashed. Absolutely, yep. It's, it's really interesting. Yep. Fantastic. That's a great fact. That's a really good fact. It's a really exciting yeah. fact as well. Um, let's get a fact from All Saints School. Now, what have you learned? It was interesting to find out that some cranberry plants are 70 years old. That's a really good fact. So really, really interesting for them to find out that some cranberry plants are 70 years old. Yeah, they'll, they'll grow for a long time, year after year after year. And some of them are very old. Amazing. I didn't realise that one. <laughs> um, and we have lost, as I said, we've lost Corny's part. So let's go to Charlton Manor Primary now and find out what you've learned today. That's a really good point you've learned. So cranberries need lots of water to grow, Patrick. They do, absolutely. So they're going to get some rain throughout the summer, hopefully. And then we're also going to use our irrigation pumps and canal systems to put some extra water on there to help them grow. So you make sure they're always watered. Oh, yeah, they That's love water. That's great, yeah. yeah. Um, great learning, children. You've obviously learned a lot about cranberries today. I'm sure Patrick and James have uh, been a massive help. Thank you so much. <laughs> and children, thank you so much for taking part. Don't forget, if you'd like to take part in a farm to fork field trip, you can do that. Um, everything you need is online. You just need to sign up and you can have lots of fun at a participating farm or producer, just like the children you can see on the screen right now. They really are having lots of fun, so you really should get involved. But it's goodbye from this uh, online field trip, all about cranberries from myself, from Patrick and James, here in Kent. Goodbye. goodbye. Goodbye, John Henry. Bye. Goodbye, All Saints School. Bye. Goodbye, Cornist Park. And goodbye, Charlton Manor Primary School. Goodbye. Bye.